Ali Kingpin had never thought of himself as a great bowler, but he sure acted like one. His confidence was the real Kingpin, even if his skills didn't always match up. Every Friday night while the world outside seemed to keep moving, Ali escaped to his favorite place, Strike City Bowling Lanes, where the noise of pins crashing felt like music. Where you headed, babe? His wife Lisa would ask, a hint of exhaustion in her voice. She didn't mind his love for bowling but couldn't quite figure out what he got from rolling a ball down the lane week after week. Their relationship seemed fine back then, though Lisa had started to seem a little distant, and sometimes, she'd stay out late herself. Just bowling with the guys, Ali would say, a grin stretching across his face as he headed for the door. He thought everything was normal, maybe because he wasn't paying close attention. At Strike City his crew was already there, warming up with friendly trash talk. The group was small but tight-knit. Strike Tyson was the first to greet him. Tyson always arrived early. You're late, Kingpin, Tyson grunted, flexing his arms and tossing the ball down the lane with all his might. It missed the pins completely, sailing right into the gutter. Strike Tyson wasn't named for his skills on the lanes. In fact, he rarely bowled a strike. The nickname came from his bravado, like the legendary boxer Mike Tyson. He carried himself like he was the toughest guy in the room. Unfortunately, Bowling didn't respond to confidence the way he hoped. You talk like you're gonna knock him dead and then, BAM! Right into the gutter, Ali said with a laugh watching Tyson retrieve his ball. The tough guy act was all part of Tyson's charm. Shut up, Kingpin, I'll show you what a real strike looks like. One of these days, Tyson muttered as he reset for another attempt. Ali laughed as Tyson's ball hit the gutter again. He loved these nights. Bowling wasn't just about the game, it was the escape. His next friend to show up was Spare Ribs, casually strolling in with a bag of takeout. Man, you really gonna eat ribs while we're bowling? Allie asked, shaking his head. Spare Ribs wasn't one for formality, and his nickname fit him perfectly. The guy always had food in hand, whether it was a burger, fries, or tonight's special, ribs. The Bowling Alley staff had long since given up on enforcing any rules about outside food. Rib's talent wasn't his bowling but his ability to eat while somehow managing a decent game. You know I can't bowl on an empty stomach, Rib said, handing Alley a fry as he munched on a rib bone. Besides, it's spare ribs. Get it? Alley chuckled. Yeah, I get it. You just better not drop sauce on the lane again. Ribs waved him off, already setting up his next shot. Somehow, between bites, he managed to knock down nine pins. See, I'm pinning my hopes on that last one, he said, licking his fingers before grabbing the ball again. Gross, Tyson muttered, but he couldn't help but smile. This was their routine. Allie lined up for his shot, concentrating for once. He always played it cool, but deep down he really did want to bowl a perfect game one day. All right, boys, watch how it's done. He launched the ball down the lane, watching as it wobbled slightly before curving straight into the gutter. Gutter McGraw, you've been practicing, Ribs yelled, smacking Allie on the back. Gutter McGraw? Allie asked, turning around to face his third friend who had just arrived. Sure enough, Gutter McGraw walked in with his trademark grin. What can I say? I'm consistent, he said. Gutter McGraw was named for exactly what you'd expect, his impressive ability to consistently land his shots in the gutter. But the guy was unshakably positive no matter how many gutter balls he bowled. He was the type who could knock zero pins and still say, hey, at least I didn't break anything. The trio was complete now. Each one brought something unique to the table. Tyson's bravado, Rib's laid-back attitude, and Gutter's endless optimism. They made the perfect bowling crew for a guy like Ali, who sat somewhere in between skill and chaos. As the weeks went on, Ali started to notice something he hadn't before. His wife, Lisa, was different lately. She wasn't cold, but she wasn't as present as she used to be. They still talked, still laughed, but it was like she was only half there, her mind somewhere else. One night after bowling, Ali came home later than usual. Lisa was already in bed reading a book. Good game? She asked, barely glancing up. Yeah, Ali said, though the truth was his game had been a disaster. His mind was too distracted by how distant things felt between them. How was your night? Good she said, turning a page. I went out with some friends. You know, just needed a little change of pace. Allie sat down next to her but the conversation didn't go much further. The cracks were small but they were starting to show. He hadn't noticed the subtle changes over the past few months but now, with every bowling night he began to realize something was shifting. A few months passed and Allie's Friday night crew was still strong. 
But then, something new came up, the Strike Town Pin Sanity League, a casual league at the same lanes they'd always bowled at, but with a twist, there was a small trophy involved, and even better, bragging rights. Let's do it, Tyson said, eyes gleaming with competitive fire. I've been saying we need some real competition, let's show these punks who owns this alley. Yeah let's do it, Ribs added, wiping barbecue sauce off his shirt. I mean we already bowl every week, how much harder could a league be? McGraw smiled. I'm in, even if I'm just here for the gutters. Allie was hesitant at first. Bowling had always been their escape, something fun and laid back. But a league? That sounded like commitment. Still the idea of winning that trophy and finally proving his kingpin status was too good to pass up. Alright boys, let's join the league, Allie said grinning. But we're doing this the only way we know how, pin sanity style. The team was born. They entered the Strike Town Pin Sanity League as the underdogs. After all, Tyson's strikes were rare. Ribs was too busy snacking, and Gutter, well, he was still Gutter McGraw, but Allie, ever the optimist, believed they could do it. Chapter 5 Trouble at Home While Allie threw himself into the league, things at home with Lisa grew more distant. She had been going out more often and when they were together, the conversations felt hollow. One night, after a particularly rough game, Allie came home to find Lisa sitting on the couch looking unusually serious. Hey, he said sitting down next to her. What's up? Lisa hesitated for a moment before speaking. Allie, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. About us. Allie's heart sank. What do you mean? I don't know how to explain this but... I don't think I'm happy in this relationship anymore, she said, her voice soft but steady. I've been feeling this way for a while but I didn't know how to say it. The words hit Allie like a strike to the gut. Is it me? Did I do something wrong? No, Lisa said quickly. It's not you. It's... It's me. I've been doing a lot of soul searching and I think I might be... different than I thought I was. Allie stared at her confused. What do you mean? Lisa looked down at her hands, her voice barely a whisper. I think I might be attracted to women. I've been trying to figure it out and I just... I don't know how to be in this relationship anymore. Allie sat there stunned. He hadn't seen this coming, not at all. His mind raced trying to make sense of everything. The cracks he'd been noticing weren't just in their relationship, they were in the very foundation of who Lisa was. Chapter 6. Moving on and the Bola Palooza. After the revelation, things between Allie and Lisa ended amicably but painfully. She eventually came out as transgender and started her transition, taking the name Chris. While they were no longer together they remained friendly, though there was always a lingering tension between them. Meanwhile, Allie and his crew continued their journey through the Strike Town Pin Sanity League, and eventually, they heard about the Bola Palooza Regional Championship, the biggest bowling tournament in the region. Chapter 7. The Championship Begins the day of the Bola Palooza Regional Championship finally arrived. The bowling alley was packed with competitors, spectators, and the buzz of excitement in the air. Alley Kingpin and his crew arrived in their signature fashion, late, laughing, and full of confidence. Tyson, ever the tough guy, flexed his arms as they entered. Let's show these people how it's done, he said, even though he had yet to land a strike in their last three practices. Ribs was already munching on popcorn, barely paying attention as he scoped out the competition. I'm just here for the snacks, man, he said with a grin. But if I happen to knock down a few pins along the way, all the better. McGraw, of course, was his usual optimistic self. I've been practicing my gutter balls, he said with a wink. I think I've perfected them. Ali smiled, but his nerves were starting to kick in. He looked across the alley and spotted Chris, who was already lining up for a practice shot. Chris looked calm, composed, and focused. Everything Ali wasn't feeling. Hey, look who it is, Tyson said, nudging Ali. Think Chris has no balls left? He whispered, snickering at his own joke. Allie cringed. Let's not go there, all right? But Tyson, Ribs, and McGraw couldn't help themselves. The jokes kept coming, and Allie tried to shake off his discomfort. After all, this was his chance to prove himself both to his friends and to Chris. Chapter 8. Chaos on the Lanes The first round of the tournament went better than expected. Tyson's bluster didn't amount to much in terms of actual strikes, but he managed a few spares. Ribs bowled while eating, somehow managing to score higher than anyone expected, 
even with sauce on his fingers. McGraw, true to form, landed more gutter balls than anyone else, but his spirits remained high. And Allie? Allie was holding his own. He wasn't the best bowler in the room, but he was consistent enough to make it through the early rounds. Then came the matchup everyone had been waiting for. Ali Kingpin versus Chris. As they stepped up to the lanes, the tension was palpable. Chris looked over at Ali, offering a small smile. Good luck, Ali, he said. May the best bowler win. Ali grinned back, trying to hide his nerves. You too, Chris. Let's make it a good game. The game began, and from the start, it was clear that Chris had the upper hand. Strike after strike, Chris dominated the lane with a grace and precision that Allie couldn't match. Every time Chris knocked down all 10 pins, the crowd erupted in applause. Meanwhile, Allie was struggling. His shots were decent but inconsistent, and the pressure was getting to him. Every time he threw the ball, it felt like it wobbled more than it should. His friends were trying to cheer him on, but even they seemed to sense that this was Chris's game to win. Chapter 9, The Final Frame As they approached the final frame, Chris was ahead by a comfortable margin. Ali needed a miracle to catch up, and everyone in the alley knew it. Tyson leaned in and whispered, You're gonna need something special, Kingpin. Maybe some divine intervention? Ali stepped up to the lane, wiping his sweaty palms on his shirt. He glanced over at Chris, who looked as calm as ever, ready to finish the game with another strike. Ali threw his ball, watching it roll down the lane. It wobbled then suddenly veered off course heading straight for the gutter. Ali closed his eyes, bracing for the inevitable. But just as the ball was about to hit the gutter, something incredible happened. A ball from the next lane over, a spare shot from a nearby competitor, came careening into Ali's lane. The two balls collided, sending Ali's ball spinning wildly toward the pins. The crowd gasped as Ali's ball miraculously knocked down all ten pins in a chaotic, unplanned strike. The alley erupted in cheers and laughter. Ali stood there, stunned, as Tyson slapped him on the back. See, Kingpin, I told you. Divine intervention. Chris looked over at him, shaking his head but smiling. I don't know how you do it, Ali. Pure luck. Ali grinned, still in shock. Hey, I'll take what I can get. Chapter 10. A New Beginning. In the end, Chris won the game, but Ali's chaotic strike became the story of the tournament. It was a moment of pure chance, the kind of thing that could only happen to someone like Ali Kingpin. Though he didn't take home the trophy, he earned something else, the respect of his friends and a newfound sense of pride. As they left the alley that night, Tyson, Ribs, and McGraw kept replaying the moment, laughing and teasing Ali. That was insane, man, Ribs said. You might not be the best bowler, but you've got the best luck in the world, McGraw nodded, still grinning. You're the only guy I know who can turn a gutter ball into a strike. Ali smiled, feeling lighter than he had in months. His journey to the Bola Palooza might not have ended in victory, but it had reminded him of what mattered most, friendship, resilience, and maybe just a little bit of luck.